That was our footage from the recent Health 2.0 conference in San Francisco. I'd now like to introduce my next guest, Bruce Cohen, President and CEO of VitaPath Genetics, which offers individualized DNA analysis for medical purposes. This is his third biotech startup company, and he spent over 25 years in leadership positions in the life sciences and high technology fields. He's also a member of the Personalized Medicine Coalition, which seeks to make medical treatments more uniquely tailored to the individual's genetic makeup. He also has an MBA from Harvard Business School. Bruce, what exactly does your company do? Uh, thanks for having me here, Marty. Uh, VitaPath Genetics is a uh, uh, relatively young biotech company based here in uh, Northern California that's developing a suite of tests that will help identify rare mutations in humans that can be overcome safely and easily. How do you find your users? Does a person feel they have a problem so they go to you? Well, our first product identifies women who have a genetic risk of having a baby with spina bifida. And spina bifida is a relatively common birth defect uh, that is debilitating. It is preventable in most cases if you know you're at risk. And right now, the only way to know you're at risk is if you've already had a baby with spina bifida. What our test is, hope we, we hope it will do is identify women genetically who carry that risk so they can take preventive measures before they get pregnant. Do you do any follow-up with it, or you just give them the results of the test and then they take it from there? Well, there's standard medical practice for a woman who has a risk of having a baby with spina bifida. And throughout the world, the medical practice is they go on very high-dose folic acid, which is a B vitamin, under the care of a physician. And the literature says that that will prevent the disease about 70% of the time. Is the test easy? Do you just need a few cells, or is it an invasive procedure? No, it's a saliva-based test, so you simply have to spit into a plastic tube and drop it in the mail. Now, I assume that over time you're not going to limit it to this one test because there are probably many tests to check for many propensities for disease. That's correct. Um, we believe that there are perhaps 100 diseases of humans that are all related to relatively rare genetic mutations that are invisible during most of your life but become biologically relevant when your body's under stress. And pregnancy is a great example of a body under stress. Now, do you figure out what the tests are? Do you figure out what you have to analyze to determine if there's a likelihood of a disease? Or is that done by somebody else and you're just performing a test that somebody else already devised? No, we develop the test ourselves. We look for the mutations in people who are affected by the disease, and then we test that uh, genetic panel on a separate cohort to make sure that the findings we have are valid and generalizable to the population. Now, you're also very much involved in something called the Personalized Medicine Coalition. What is that, and how does that relate to the work of your company? The Personalized Medicine Coalition is a Washington-based group of about 200 companies and academic institutions that are all trying to advance the case for personalized medicine, the ability to tailor therapy to an individual's specific situation, and in many cases, their genetics. Now, is that for you know, simple ailments like the common cold, or are we talking about very complicated diseases with uh, you know, maybe difficult treatments? So the most exa advanced examples of personalized medicine relate to the diagnosis and treatment of cancer. And there are a number of therapies now where it's very important to understand the specific genetics of a tumor because some tumors are responsive to some drugs and some are not. So if you can understand the tumor's biology, you can give people the treatment they need and you can also avoid giving them treatment they don't need. Now what does this coalition do? Is it doing the science, or is it uh, a lobbying group to get you know, government funds to support research? What, what's the thrust of its effort? The organization does an educational function to help people understand the benefits of personalized medicine. It advances our issues at the major regulatory agencies in Washington, and it releases reports periodically. In fact, the case for personalized medicine, its annual report, is coming out in a couple of weeks. Now, where does it look like medicine is going with all of this new knowledge of genetics? Does it look like we're going in the direction that everybody is going to live longer and healthier and happier lives, or is that too optimistic? 
No, I think that's likely, and I think that's the objective. If we can help people understand their very specific needs based on the combination of their genetics and the environment they live in, we can intervene earlier and we can intervene more safely to make sure that people are getting the right information, getting the right therapy at the right time. Is this also about empowering patients so that they take more responsibility for their own health? A couple of generations ago, doctors were considered to be sort of God-like figures that you never questioned when they told you something. It was like a pronouncement from Mount Olympus. Yeah, I think we believe that long the, in the way we practice medicine, the physician has to be at the center of it. And so what the purpose of all this information is, is to help the patient become more informed so they can, with their physician, make the right decisions for them. Now, is this a pretty smooth path? Uh, or is there any resistance that there are people who don't want to change? Maybe the system is working well for them the way it is now? I think there is some resistance. The one-size-fits-all mentality that we all grew up with has a lot of inertia, I think. And there is some resistance at the regulatory agencies. The FDA has been struggling for a very long time with how to think about personalized medicine, how to get drugs approved based on specific conditions of individuals. And the insurance companies have been slow to adopt this, although more recently because it has the potential of both improving health outcomes and saving money, the insurance industry is now much more enthusiastic than it has been. Now in the future, can we expect that your doctor will have a copy of your complete genetic profile? And so every time he prescribes anything, it's with your specific genome taken into consideration. Yeah, the advances in the cost of uh, genetic analysis and the sequencing of the human genome what cost $300 million 15 years ago now can be done for a few thousand dollars. So it's clear that in the future we'll all be able to have our whole genome sequence available to our physicians. And the interpretation of that is where the information technology comes in because we're talking about three billion bits of information. And it's not very simple. The notion of a single gene causing disease is rather limited. Most diseases are caused by multiple genes acting together and the interpretation of that information is very complex. Have we done pretty well as far as understanding the different parts of the genome so that we really have a good handle on what parts cause problems? We only have about half a minute left, so unfortunately this is going to have to be the last yeah. question. I think the answer is we're at the beginning and we've had some great successes, but it's very early. This system is very complicated and we're learning every day more and more and more how to think about genes and how they interact with each other and how they interact with environment. So it looks like genetics is really the future of medicine. That's where most medical development will be in coming years? Absolutely. Okay, very good. It was good to have you here today. We are going to have to wrap the show because we are out of time. I'd like to thank my guest, Bruce Cohen, uh, also my earlier guest, John D'Souza. Thank you for watching. Be sure to visit our website, www.futuretalk.net. For Future Talk, I'm Marty Wasserman, and we'll see you next time.